So for those of you who may consume spinach, you may know that spinach is known as an alkaline within the body, right? And that can be a very good thing to balance out all of your system internally for sure. But also, if you are a spinach consumer, you may have also read at some point in the last 10 years about the amount of oxalic acid that exists within spinach. And for those of you that are like eating this, consuming spinach, and maybe you don't like make those connections, but for me, because we're putting this into our soaps and we're dealing with alkaline and acid, I was befuddled. I'm like, well, how can something be both, right? That is what we are going to talk about today while we make a spinach soap using the spinach juice that we made in the last video. And I'll tell you more about all of that in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for our first spinach soap, and we will be using the spinach juice that we made from this fresh spinach as 100% of a water replacement within the lye solution. Now, as I said before, spinach, alkaline inside the body, contains a lot of oxalic acid though. So what's up with that? Well, we're going to talk about that within the video, but what I am thinking it's going to mean within the soap is that it might be a hack for citric acid or for sodium citrate. More information on sodium citrate coming up, like that's a whole video in and of itself. It's part of the deep. For those of you who may not know, a lot of soap makers do like to put citric acid or sodium citrate into their lye solution in order to help out with hard water. Now that what that's going to do within the soap itself is it's going to bind to these minerals that exist within the hard water and prevent soap scum. And so that's good because otherwise if you have a bar of handcrafted soap of cold process or hot process soap that doesn't have any detergents that already counteract for that, you could be dealing with some lather problems and ultimately the bar not working the way that it's intended if you're dealing with hard water concerns. So citric acid is commonly put into soaps for that purpose. That said, oxalic acid also helps out with mineral deposits. And so I want to talk about that while we make this soap and tell you what I am looking forward to within the tests and what I'm hoping to get from this maybe citric acid hack. So let's go to the video, to the pouring of the soap. We can talk more about all of those things. I'll explain them, I promise, you know, there. All right, so we are working with our first spinach soap today. And uh, yes, as I juice the spinach, let's talk about this whole spinach is alkaline and acidic, you know? So technically speaking, spinach juice itself is slightly alkaline. It doesn't mean that like spinach overall is alkaline. So oxalic acid is a compound that is found within the spinach, right? And it's primarily found within like all of the, uh, well, all the solid parts. So your leaves and your stems and all the jazz. And so once your spinach is juiced, some of the oxalic acid may still be within the juice, but the bulk of it's going to be found within the waste material in this case. And so even though there is oxalic acid within spinach, it's considered an alkaline, uh, well, an alkaline food in your body because it actually does, it has the overall effect of alkalinity within the body. And so that's good when you're consuming it or every, or whatever, but we need to pay attention to those sorts of things, I guess, when we are dealing with it, with the, when we're making soap, because obviously we have an alkaline solution with our sodium hydroxide and our water. And so if I add just straight spinach juice to this soap instead of water, am I going to be dealing with something that is overly alkaline? The answer to that is no. Um, Lye is a very strong alkaline and the spinach is 90% water, so it's all going to be fine. And plus with the tests that you saw recently, you know what I mean, that I did yesterday or whenever that the first video of the spinach stuff, 
the majority of it is, you know, water. And in all of those tests, they were the the pH was coming out pretty neutral. And I did make some changes to the pH by putting in either sodium hydroxide, and you can watch everything separate and the solids start, you know, coming out, salting out, whatever. Or you can also do that with citric acid too. And so both do exist within it, but the mineral content and the other nutrients within the spinach ultimately help balance out the acidity within the solution. So we shouldn't have to worry about it too terribly much within the lye solution, which is good because that's what we're doing with this first spinach soap. We're going to be taking 100% of the water and substituting the for spinach juice. And so we're not just adding a little bit of it in. And so that's what we are going to be working with here. But I did want to talk about the oxalic acid anyway and what it does when it comes in contact with sodium hydroxide and whether or not it's a good and beneficial thing to put in soap regardless. Okay, and onto the pour. And this is the recipe that we are using. So we are going to keep it the same across all the board. The olive oil has been infused with spinach for about three or four days and then I blended it down. I will show you that in I think video three, like soap three of all of these. I think that's where I'm putting it. But I'm going to keep the recipe exactly the same. So we are dealing with a 1.5 to 1 ratio of water to sodium hydroxide. And within this one, I'm actually putting in a turmeric exfoliant because uh, somebody used, to, oh, Madhouse Mama sent me a turmeric, well, a whole line. There were three different products. Life changing. Holy crap. I love her turmeric products. They were so wonderful for my skin. And I wanted to put in a turmeric exfoliant just because I was so obsessed with the testers that she sent to me and it was gone and so I had turmeric on the brain. So anyway, that is going to be the difference within all of this. The clay that we put into the oils will still be the same and we're going to keep everything as constant as we possibly can across all of these and just actually put in the spinach in different ways so we can test the overall lather when it's all said and done and see which method effectively of incorporating the spinach into the solution into the soap is going to be the best one. Wowie wow, that is hot and that is dark green. Speaking of dark green, my soap batter is shockingly dark green with this because of the infusion that we did. And that's crazy. That is a crazy, crazy green. So I'm not going to be using any colorants at all within any of this because why do I need to, you know? So anyway, um, what is oxalic acid? Uh, so effectively oxalic acid when you it reacts with it is an acid and so when it reacts with sodium hydroxide it effectively neutralizes the acidic properties and it becomes a salt you know we've heard of this before we make soap and that salt is sodium oxalate so the ph if, if you're putting in you know your sodium hydroxide and your in this case your oxalic acid it effectively becomes neutral. Uh, so, I mean, specifically, what is it? What's the formula? Uh, 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 uh. So, if you have one part oxalic acid to two parts sodium hydroxide, the end result is one part sodium oxalate plus two parts water. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that if you are just using like the spinach or just a, a pure or just the spinach. Let's just go with spinach to keep it easy. So all the spinach, that's weird though. What happened with the, yep, that's strange. So for all of the, uh, the oxalic acid that exists within the spinach itself, right? Any one of those parts that happens to come in contact with the sodium hydroxide within this, right? What you are doing is you are taking two parts of the sodium hydroxide that you needed for your overall batch and converting it to your sodium oxalate which means you have less sodium hydroxide in your batch, which means you would have to adjust your batch. Conversely, talking about citric acid, citric acid does the same thing, and it's one part citric acid to three parts sodium hydroxide ends in, I think, three. I'm pretty sure it's three parts. Yep, three parts water and one part sodium citrate, right? This is why I always recommend that you actually just make your sodium citrate solution, right? So just take your sodium hydroxide solution, so an aqueous solution, and your um, citric acid solution, so an aqueous citric acid solution, combine them, neutralize them, and then measure that into, because then it's no longer, because you can put sodium citrate in and there's no reaction between the sodium hydroxide. Anyway, 
So with the sodium hydroxide and the citric acid, we know that we have to adjust our lye in our recipes if we're putting citric acid in. I would say that you would probably have to do that with this as well to ensure that you have the right amount of lye. What happens if you don't have the amount, right amount of lye though? Well, in this case, extra lye is being consumed. You have a more super fatted bar. So that's not the end of the world when it's all said and done. But if you're going for a 0% super fat or a very specific super fat, then yeah, it could be the end of the world. So always do your maths and make sure you have the right amount of lye within all of this. So that's what I would recommend generally if you're going to be using... Uh, I mean, you could do it now, I suppose, if you're going to be doing the spinach, but I don't think it's super necessary within all of this. Citric acid, I do recommend actually neutralizing before you put it into your lye solution, just so you don't have to do the extra maths. But it's just a, I don't know, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other at some point. Anyway, I digress. Let's move on to this beautiful cut. It was sea popped and gelled and the soap was absolutely gorgeous. I poured it super hot. So why am I talking about sodium citrate, citric acid and sodium oxalate, oxalic acid? Well, because both of these are chelators, right? The reason why we put sodium citrate or citric acid into our soaps is to help out with hard water because it binds to the minerals and it prevents soap scum. And so I'm thinking, well, if citric acid does that, if sodium citrate does that, does sodium oxalate do that? And the answer is it does bind to minerals, yes, but it doesn't in a different way. And so while citric sodium citrate is a really good chelator and it's a good chelating agent that can bind to the metal and the minerals and all the ions in hard water, it's a it's really good for preventing soap scum, right? So it's really good for bathing with or using at the sink or whatever so you don't get any soap scum on your shower and all the jazz. But sodium oxalate, on the other hand, it's really good chelating agent that binds to formed soap scum, right? So it's good at cleaning the soap scum off that already exists. So what does that mean? That means that probably if you're out of citric acid and you have spinach in your fridge, can you swap that out and still get the same hard water benefits uh no i would say probably not not exactly and so what i would recommend i mean it's better than nothing i suppose so maybe but i would it's not going to be nearly as effective as using your actual citric acid if the goal is to prevent soap scum from forming but if you are creating a cleaning product if you're creating something for the uh, dishwasher or for the washing machine or for your dishes or for just general cleaning purposes in the house, you could absolutely include spinach instead of citric acid and you would get the really good chelators that come from the sodium, uh, from the sodium oxalate. You know what I mean? And so for that reason, I think it would be great. I really am interested in, this, in these tests and I will be comparing them against a bar of soap that does have citric acid in it because I want to see just the overall hand feel. Obviously, I'm going to have to use it for a while before I can determine whether or not it does anything with hard water. But we will also be doing a test that, with a, some water that contains that I've made hard because I don't have hard water. You know what I mean? And so... We'll be running a test with this too to see if it has any benefit within an aqueous solution. But for now, you know, we're just sort of playing and we're theory crafting and all the things. And so I am looking forward to all the benefits that we can probably be getting from this because of the flavonoids within spinach as well as all of the vitamins and hoping that it creates a really nice bubble. I don't really know if it's going to though. What's in here that would create a good bubble? Off the top of my head, everything that we talked about yesterday, I'm not really seeing anything that would be an epic bubble. But, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We will definitely find out with all the tests. But for now, this is the first soap and the first thing that I will be looking for with all of it. And just something that you should work, look for whenever you're putting fresh ingredients into your soaps. Pay attention to the pH. Know what that is before you put it into your soap so you know what you're working with and what you may have to adjust as a result. So first up, the color of that soap, absolutely stunning. I was super impressed by the amount of color that we were able to get just from the fiber portion, just from the remnants from the juicing process. 
to go into the actual oil. So that was actually gorgeous. Love that. Second up, that dark, dark green solution within the lye. Yeah, definitely lent to all the colors as well. So as far as natural colorants go, spinach can definitely be a winner. I love that for all of us. As far as the oxalic acid versus citric acid, and is this going to be good for hard water? We don't really know until we test. And so we will be doing that in the next couple days. But for now, these babies have to, you know, start losing their water weight so we can give them a proper test. So that's what they are going to do while we are going to move on to the next soap in all of this. And we're going to be playing with something that I think is kind of fun, question mark, I don't know. Um, it definitely was making a mess for sure. So if you're interested in that, like, comment, subscribe, share all the things. As I already said though, I'm putting these out to the members first as soon as I get them, you know, offloaded from my computer and the general public gets them later. So members, if you're watching this, you've already done that. And thank you. I appreciate you. I hope you guys are going to have an excellent weekend. Memorial weekend is upon us. It like jumped at us. It was crazy. There's so much going on. Soap and Clay family, it's nuts. We have Soap and Clay Kidlet number one is making her stage debut. And so I've been helping out with that and we're doing the audio for it. And so that means we'll be there for 12 hours tomorrow. It's all a thing. That's mostly our weekend, but it'll be a great time. And so I hope you guys are having a good time doing whatever you're going to do for Memorial Weekend. I have to go. I have more soaps. I have more things to film. I love you all. To the Sudzers. To the rest of you, I don't know you. But I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of spinach-infused soapy fun. Bye.